Hi everyone. This week I want to talk to you about the relationships between existential phenomenology, narrative transcription analysis, and narrative performance. And this all rests in this idea of why do our narratives have to be audio recorded in order to do narrative performance analysis as opposed to just listening and taking notes. And here's the reason why. We are rooted in existential phenomenology that honors the fact that our bodies live through the world and become experts at seeing the world through our bodies, of seeing how culture responds to us, of being able to see how others see us and interpret how others are interpreting us. And we share this embodied knowledge through the stories that we choose to tell others. So when this person takes time out of their day to say, let me tell you a story about what it means to be me, we audio record it so we don't end up paraphrasing and making it a story that is in our words instead of theirs. Honor them deeply through wanting to hear how their body, their vocal cords, their pauses, their speech patterns, their false starts as they start a sentence one way and decide to go another, the emotions they choose to infuse each line with are part of your interpretive analysis. And you take the time to go through and listen for those pauses. We don't take out the ums and the ahs. We don't take out the pauses, the moments where they change what they were saying, because we wanna honor the story so that the person who sees us performing it can see how it was told to us. Now, there are lots of situations where you would with the idea of cleaning up the narrative, of making it flow better, if there is this idea of that's improper English that you would fix it. There's plenty of situations where you would. But for narrative performance, we want to honor how the body tells the story as much as we honor that story told. So when you embody this script that you created from the audio recording of that interview you conducted, be attentive to those details. Now, as we talked about before, there is this idea of what does it mean to embody the story of another? And that can get complicated. And sometimes it can say, you know, I am not part of a marginalized group that this person is part of, and I'm worried this is going to look like I am stereotyping or that I'm making fun or I'm making a mockery in order to have people watch me instead of understand them. And I've chosen not to perform some stories for that reason, because they were from a group that I was not a part of. And I was worried that as I interpreted the story as it was told, it would seem as though I was falling into cultural appropriation and using stereotypes in order to engage an audience in a performance that was not from a culture I was a part of. And I encourage you that if it feels uncomfortable, if it feels inappropriate, to not perform that particular excerpt in that way. And we can talk more about whether we need a new interview or whether there's another part of the story that might be more appropriate. And we can make some decisions that way. There's no one answer, but I can say at times when I've been uncomfortable, um, my choice has always been to just not perform that particular excerpt for an audience. And sometimes I've ended up having a student that identified with that cultural group perform that particular part of an interview. And sometimes I've decided that belongs in the book or that belongs in a different analysis and not on the stage. So I want, we want to navigate this with care, complexity, always thinking, how am I honoring this person through careful attention to the story they took time to tell me through their body and the way that they told it in order to teach others about what it means to be human in pursuit of a better, more connected, 
empathetic, understanding world. And we will be on that journey together this week as we prepare for our narrative performances. Reach out with any questions. Bye.